Tyson Fury, the well-known world boxing champion, and the bright star on the top list of boxing championship, has shown his love for Islam. After going through despair, Tyson Fury openly stated that he is a Muslim. The Bronson-esque beard. Yeah. Um, also, I like the headpiece as well. Yeah. Can you talk me through this look? Yeah, my, my beard man is about my religion now because I've uh, recently converted to Islam. Um. He also named himself Riyadh Tyson Muhammad. Ya Allah, we've worked so hard to get to this far. We've stood together, fought together, and we're going to win together. Ya Allah, give us a victory and we give you all the glory. Amen. He was clearly the winner, and he's now the heavyweight champ. May God, the most merciful, guide him to the path of those whom you have favored. Let us introduce this wonderful story by shedding lights on the heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury. All three scores to the winner by unanimous decision from the United Kingdom, the new unified heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury! Now, we will see the happy reactions and the warm welcome of the American Muslims towards Tyson Fury. We will start with his brother in Islam, former heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. I don't know, I'm not watching any fighters. This one guy, Tyson Fury, I like to watch him because he has my name and stuff. So, yeah, other than that, no, I like Tyson Fury. Everybody said, ah, he's a bummer, I like him. I'm, the fact that somebody would name their son after me and all the stuff that I've been through and all that ugly, nasty, um, yeah, I like him. I like Tyson Fury. Now, we will watch the reaction of Americans who embraced Islam, represented by Brother Eddie and by Dr. Lawrence Brown towards the journey of depression and search that led Tyson Fury to become a Muslim. Dr. Lawrence Brown, Salaam Alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Good, good. It's good to have you back on the program. Good to be back. Good to be back in Chicago. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to let this video play off and then we're going to go ahead and react to this. How did you realize that you, you had mental health issues? Because I mean, I, what, what was it exactly? Because I got anxiety, PTSD. Yeah, yeah. Anxiety started to come uh, heavily. Um, I always suffered with depression. Mm. Um, when, I, when I was on top of the world, it became more and more and more depressed until it was like suicidal thoughts and but stuff why? like that. People would assume I don't that know. you had the money, you Tired had the belts. Tall. I, I, had, I had everything. I had money, fame. Glory, good looks, I had it all. Everything that a man would ever want, good looks I had subjective, it. Yeah, good looks, oh, yeah, I don't okay. know about That's that, I don't know about that. <laughs> but still, I had everything, but mm. yet it didn't mean nothing. I wanted to die on a daily basis. Mm. So material goods are only good for when things are going right in your life. When everything's rolling good and everything's happy, then material goods are okay. But you can have everything in the world and, and feel like shit on a daily basis mm -hmm. because no one can see inside the mind. This is one of the most uh, uh, talked about individuals at the moment because he's got a big fight coming up he's uh i believe he's an undefeated heavyweight champion that's interesting because while tyson fury where he describes going through all of these traumatic instances and almost at one point i don't know if he was in his lamborghini ferrari one of the fast cars almost hitting 200 miles close to and that was it he was about to run his car off to ditch the road and kill himself and then something else happened I'm going to show you and then we'll take off because it kind of links to what you're saying. And at this point, I'd never, I'd never begged or cried to God to help me before. I prayed a lot 
all my life, but I'd never been in this physical state before. I could feel tears running down my face. My chest was wet with tears. Because I knew I couldn't do it on my own. It wasn't possible for me. Because I'd tried and tried and tried and ended up back in the pub, back drinking. I almost accepted that that was going to be my fate, an alcoholic. So I was on my knees in this bedroom and after praying for about 10 minutes, I got up and I felt the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. And for the first time in years, I knew I was going to make a comeback. So this is the turning point. It seems like now a weight was lifted off his shoulders where he sincerely, earnestly, he's turning to God. What do you think about your, what's your action when you hear him talking about this? I know what he's talking about. I understand what he's talking about. I've felt it. You've probably felt it. A lot of other believers have felt it. Uh, if God means good for a person, if Allah intends good for a person, he guides them to Islam. Now, you can believe that or not, but that's just simply the fact of the matter. And, um, and so what I've noticed so many times, so many people with these spiritual experiences, it's their awakening, it's their epiphany, it's their turning point, and, and it sets them on the path of discovery. And, you know, that, that path, uh, you know, frequently ends in them becoming Muslim. So I look at it as a personal experience. And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, he had it, and inshallah, it will guide him to good things. Okay. But I'm afraid yeah. what, what happens now, I don't know if you, I mean, only God Almighty knows the future, but you, you make a foresight like, we're, we're creatures, we keep sometimes repeating the same mistake. We learn a little bit, we pick up, but then, okay, sure. I'm right back at it. But still, I did turn to God, but am I living truly how the Creator wants me to live? Yeah, so, you know, it's pretty much on Him right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's had the feeling, He's had that kind of epiphany, that, that moment, that moment of awakening. And now it's up to Him whether He's going to... Uh, work with that, whether he's going to make an effort, whether he's going to study, whether he's going to look for the religion of truth, or whether he's just going to brush it past and say, okay, well, that moment's past, and now I'm going on with my, you know, my life as I used to live it before. Yeah. That's on him. And, I mean, what can you do? That's on him. Same way for everybody out there, this is on you. You know, e each person out there, it's on you what you decide to do with it. If, if you uh, if you want to pursue it, if you want to study, if you want to dry, try to draw closer to your creator, um, then it's on you to make that effort. Nobody's going to make it for you. Yeah. The easiest thing to do is also kind of the hardest thing to do. Yeah. And that is turning turning to your creator, and uh, and seeking the religion of truth, seeking the truth of the creator and doing so with a commitment to submit. The story of Tyson Fury shows that one could have fame, money, and glory, but still is unhappy with his life because he is far from God. Tyson Fury asked God for guidance, and God Almighty guided him to Islam and got his life back on track. Millions of Muslims around the world prayed for him, and wished him success. The heavyweight champion of the world reminded everyone of the former Muslim champion, Mike Tyson. And of course, he reminded us of the man that God spread the love of him in the heart of everyone. The great legendary Muhammad Ali. Finally, we asked God to bestow his love on Tyson Fury, guide him, and admit him by your compassion and forgiveness among those whom you have favored, and send the tranquility on his heart. The reward that we get from him